Hi everybody, you good? Um, morning, afternoon, good evening. Oh my lord, that was a great start, the phone falling. Um, sorry, I'll start again. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, before we uh, bring Zeb in for the chat, I just want to say a little bit about Give to Life for those of you who might not have um, come across us before as an organisation. We make um, Give to Live, Give to Live, we make it possible for the vulnerable and excluded to be able to go and see live music. As we do that, we cover every cost from transport, gigs, trips to merch, stands, um, and more. And we'll talk about that later with Zeb. I can see Zeb's, Zeb's already here requesting to be live in my video. So here we go, waiting for Zeb Love to connect. I've sent the yes. And hopefully we're there. Zeb, how you doing, man? Hey, man. Good to see you. It's good to see you. I actually am going to do something I've never done before to start okay. off. Um, I was going through your website again and just seeing your art, and I just want to say for it's just beautiful. Whoever you are, motion and reflection are especially for you. The divine ship sails the divine sea for you, whoever you are. You are he or she for whom the earth is solid and liquid. You are he or she for whom the sun and the moon hang in the sky. For none more than you are the, the present and the past none more than you is immortality Walt Whitman that's, yeah. one of your, that's one of yours and I know we're meant to be talking about gigs and posters and what have you but I saw that and I felt I wanted to start with that it's, it's a beautiful poster and it's a beautiful quote and I just wanted to start off with that thanks Tom uh, I started I got a picked up a book of his poetry at like a, a store for like 50 cents somewhere and it was like a a really small little paperback and I was, just got really interested in all of his stuff and then um, I saw a portrait of him at the library a long time ago and I just quickly like sketched it down and then I turned it into a, a print and yeah it was a lot of fun I, I like I like that one a lot I yeah I like it a lot as, as I said I was going through your work earlier again and and we spoke yesterday and and um as I said, it was a it was a very pleasant argument that my my fiance and I had about which of our your non gig prints we were going to get, yeah, and I, and I just thought I'd have another look and I kept, and I looked at the quote rather than just the picture and it was yeah perfect. Um, I'm glad you like it, man. I very much do. I very much do. Right, so we're here. We're talking, and thank you so much for joining me and joining Given for Live. Um, let's start where we usually start, gig posters. How did it happen? Well, I, um, started out in merchandise design, like doing, actually I started out designing stuff for my friends' bands and, um, just doing like $50 t-shirt designs here and there and whatnot. And, uh, I, um, I liked doing it. And then I, I started getting more and more contacts and then, um, led me into like doing like Bigger, bigger t-shirts. I remember the first job I got was like a Billy Idol, uh, Avril Lavigne, like shirt design. They, were, they just gave me like some photos and I had to like, make them look like they were aged 100 years or whatever. And um, did that. And I like, remember how excited I was to get that job. I was like, mm. this is finally, I finally made it and stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, that led, I did that for about, I don't know, probably three or four years solid, just like hustling t-shirt designs. And I was doing some photography at the time too. And um, just got a little bit, of, a little bit of everything. And then uh, my buddy here in Pittsburgh uh, invited me to be in this art show and he wanted some originals. So I screen printed for the first time, which was a new medium to me. And uh, like did some illustration stuff and I didn't know what I was doing, but I was having a lot of fun with it. And then uh, that kind of sparked it, and I did some more of those. And then some of my other contacts saw, uh, got my name spread around a little bit more. And then eventually, like, met, led me to to uh, Ava Brothers and um, like their merchandise manager. 
And uh, yeah, after that, like that was back in 2011, I think I did my first one for him. And um, after that, it just kind of snowballed because I, I, I did a lot of work for them. And then uh, my other band saw just like word of mouth type deal. And um, yeah, it's, it's just been that. And I, I've been loving doing posters. I mean, I, I started, yeah. Yeah, we, I remember us chatting about this yesterday and um, you saying it, calling them the Avett brothers. And I mean, it's like the transatlantic difference. I'm like reading it as, <laughs> as the Avett brothers. Yeah, no. yeah it's, you can say it either way. I don't, I don't know the proper way to say it, but yeah. But yeah, so, and that's how it all started. And I saw, and, yeah, and you have done quite a lot of work for them over the years. Yeah, it's, I think it's up to like, I don't know, in the mid 20s, 25, 30 posters. <laughs> Yeah, there's a it's... really cool one where there's there's uh, there's an owl in the poster. Oh yeah, the barn owl. Ah, that's ah, I was, was going to say a house in an, in a barn that in, in, in an owl that didn't make sense, but of course, as you say, a barn owl it makes perfect sense. I see a question. The favorite band I would like to do work for. Um, ah. I I've always wanted to do a poster for like Jack White or White Stripes, cause, like a favorite band, or uh, The Strokes. But neither one of those guys. I mean, Jack White tours here and there, but um, I guess he's he has certain people that he has always do his posters, and then The Strokes never really play shows. Mm. But um, yeah, those are my two my two white whales, you could say. And uh, yeah, yeah. And it, and if one's not touring, it's kind of tough makes it tough. right yeah <laughs> and yeah jack that, white doesn't go out a lot of, at all does he no he, he just the rock and tours just put out an album that was really good i got to see them live um yeah he puts on a hell of a show that's for sure apparently ed ed i'm assuming they mean eddie better knows jack white so you never know oh yeah do they <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, the poster, the poster scene is a pretty small, tight knit group. So I imagine the musician scene is pretty small and tight knit as well. You know, everybody kind of knows everybody. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And again, again, I mean, a lot of this is going back to stuff we chatted about yesterday. And then, you know, and Given to Live has a strong connection to sort of Pearl Jam and Eddie Vedder, but not themselves personally, but because of they're my favorite band and lots of things came out of it. You were saying how when you did your Eddie and uh, your first show poster for them was Eddie and yeah, you yeah, hadn't come across anything like <laughs> it. No, I never, I didn't know what I was, I just dropped them on a Friday with no announcement or no planning. And I think I uh, charged like $30 a poster or something. And uh, I was, my email was ransacked with, with messages and stuff. And it was just like, I had no idea. No, I never had um, a reaction like that before. And then um, the last year or two years ago, the, the Pearl, Pearl Jam Berlin one was uh, even a bigger, <laughs> bigger uh, uproar for it. So it was really cool to, to get to hear people's stories and like hear them travel, like how they traveled all the way to Germany for that show from America and all these other things. And, it's pretty interesting, you know, like, I'm a fan of the bands I'm a fan of, you know, and I've never done some that kind of pilgrimage before. The farthest I've dr driven is like Ohio, <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> two and a half hours. So it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, Pearl Jam crowd are a very different crowd. And I kind of say jokingly, but it's I think it's what I would, it's probably true. I mean, you name, you pick a city, and I, if there was a show there tonight, I'm, I'd almost guarantee you, if I was there, I'd know them anywhere in the world. Yeah. I mean, there are so many people travel. You know, I hope you charge a bit more for your for your Berlin than you did for your. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah. I Good. still still probably didn't charge enough, but oh well. It's, it's that's something actually I've heard from a few artists. They're kind of like, how high, low should I go? You know, they don't want to kind of be seen as, as the expression goes, gouging people. Right. But, but at the same time, devalues it if you do it too cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I first started doing posters, I had no idea what to charge them, so I just charged thirty bucks for pretty much the first few years. Like no matter what the band was. 
and then I was talking to some of my peers and they're like, you need to raise your prices, man. Like, uh, so I just like kind of incremental, like five, 35, 40, you know, some, some of 45, 50 now, but I don't know. I just want to make sure everybody has a, I don't know, if they can afford the work, you know, if they like it, you know, and hang it on their walls. I'd much rather them have it on their walls and sit in my box, you know, and yeah, just because I've seen it a million times. I don't need to hold on to all the things I make. <laughs> mm, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, and I'm, uh, it's like, hi, I'm, hi, I'm waving to Scott. Um, he knows what my interest is, the max. The Met, Met you know, God, can hardly speak. The Met, Met Metallica Fox Theater is easily one of his favorite things ever. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's it was actually wasn't even it wasn't a real Metallica job. It was um, for the promotion company, Another Planet Entertainment, and uh, they hired me to do this poster as a gift to the band and like the crew. So. Uh, I was never actually allowed to sell those, so that's why I made the art print out of it so I could sell it and stuff like that. But, um, um, yeah, that was a fun one. Uh, they gave me, like, three days notice to do it. <laughs> oh, so and, they uh, really it made it easy on you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I did, like, a couple thumbnails, and I, I always liked that uh, the snake on the Black Album, like, just like that. But, but, so I just kind of did my iteration of that. Mm. You're getting compliments here. Your work's absolutely amazing. I, I appreciate that. It's, I'm, I'm new to this Instagram thing. I'm not really sure how to, or this message video thing. So I'm not really sure how to do this, but do I appreciate just, it. Yeah, just, I mean, if you see something you want to respond to, you, you know, yeah. just, just say so. Don't bother with a, a comment and everything. Yeah, no problem, Pet. Uh, robot, I'm glad you like their test prints. Mm. So, uh, the ones you've done, I mean, I, I, I mean, I've seen them and I've seen them again. And then we spoke about Dead and Company yesterday. And, you know, do you have your favorite bands to work with or favorite posters that you've done that you just like, God? I nailed it. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> I don't think I ever feel that way. With any, no, any I, knew that, I knew that was coming from speaking to other artists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're all our own worst enemy and critic for sure. It's, um, but, uh, the one, I don't know, like when I get really involved and hands on, like I did a child, my first childish Gambino poster last year was with those, um, three kids marching. Mm. Um, that was a lot of fun because I like implemented a, um, spray paint and i cut a stencil out and so every single one every single poster isn't one of a kind because it's all hand painted and different colors i had like 12 different cans of spray paint and me and my friend just like did all the background work in one day it took like 12 hours of so much work and then on the next day after that we printed five color silk screen on top of the the spray paint so just like whenever i got to do stuff like that it was just it's really fun to mix the mediums and get different re results and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know. I can't say I like working with the Ava brothers cause they're, they're like, they're such a good client and um, their fans are so kind and supportive. And um, you know, it's, uh, I love working for Pearl Jam. Like their fans are awesome. And um, I, I I I don't think I've ever had a bad experience with uh knock on wood but I've never had a bad experience with any of these uh any of the jobs I've ever had. I've always gotten paid and mm. um you know, some some sell better than others obviously, but every single poster is like a you know, learning. You learn so much each time and I'm always trying some something new. So it's like each each new thing I'm trying to experiment and thankfully I'm experimenting on like somebody else's dime more or less like they're paying me to experiment and uh well, through experimenting and doing things badly you kind of learn what works and what doesn't and stuff like that so i don't know it's uh i just love doing it i don't i don't really know yeah and and, li and listening to you it, sh it shines through that you love for, love doing it and l again sort of repeating myself um 
which I'll actually prove that I actually do do a little research <laughs> before. <laughs> but looking at your posters, like so many of them are so complex uh, to me as a non-artist, you know. Um, yeah. And then I look at that Pearl Jam one at Berlin, and we were meant to go, my, my fiance and I, who is also helped me not go mad with Given to Life. Um, but, but we got sick, so, but that, um, well, she got sick, so we didn't go to that show. But to me, that looks so complicated. And then you have the, and I'm not into the Pixies particularly, and then you have that amazing Pixies poster with, with the house. Oh, and yeah. Then, and it's kind of like, to me, they're both incredibly compl complex. And to me, they, to you, they might just be a piece of cake. You know, but there's so, <laughs> yeah, you know, but there's like so much. Yeah. They're so different, and yet so much in them in a different way. You know what? How, it, it obviously right. shows a broad talent as well. You don't have just one thing you knock out again and again with vague similarities. Right. Well, thanks. I'm glad. I don't know, and it's worrisome too when I'm making stuff because I'm always trying new things, and it's, I'm always worried there's not a cohesive look and feel to the body of work, you know, but. I don't know, like all those posters, like you mentioned, and every single thing I ever do is starts out really crude, and then like with weeks of work and trial and error, like you strip the layers of like complexity away, and you kind of just chip away at it. And like each day, you come, I come in, and I don't really know. I don't really have a a, a grand design. I kind mm. of just let let the poster or whatever take me wherever it wants to, and I think that's a lot a lot of fun that way. Mm. Um, like you, I start out with like a composition idea, I guess, and but then it, some things don't work when you get the values in there, and some things don't work placement. So that it just kind of just evolves and grows. And um, if I, I definitely can't just like envision like those two posters you mentioned, like start to finish, like they don't look that way at all in my head. Like I don't even know what they're supposed to look like. So it's just fun. It's like a, a fun journey each each time around. Like I'm working mm. on a poster, working on a poster right now, and I've had uh, I have so much time to do it because everything's kind of closed down and it's not going to be released till fall. But um, just like being able to, I started it like last month and I worked on it for about uh, two weeks straight, and then it's like took a break and just like I'm gonna let this sit and you know come back to it. Like and then I see all the things wrong with it, like the it's off balance and this and that and the other and it's just like it's kind of nice to have this time to you know really perfect everything instead of just getting out the door because you're so busy which tends to be the case especially uh in gig poster season when it's just like your deadlines are just like three days you got three days to figure it out so i mean i do the best i can with that but um i'm just really trying to uh take the stuff up a notch, you know, and learn from all the old mistakes. Well, you mentioned the three day thing, and I was, actually, I was, it was something I was going to ask is, you know, you're, and you're saying now you've got something that's coming out way ahead, you've already been working on it for two months. I mean, that's, that's so different, you know. Oh, yeah. It's, and it's kind of like, it, they both. You know, for me, it'd be like if I'm used to doing it one way, and then I had so much time to do it another way. I don't know that. I don't know that I'd be able to get my head around it. Right. It's, but obviously, I mean, listening to you, obviously you have, and it's working out well for you. Well, it's like a blessing and a curse when you have this much time to do something. Like you just, you kind of pick away at it and like go backwards all the time because you can just like keep undoing the progress you made to try to make it better. But most of most of the time, the stuff I'm I'm changing is just like nobody else will notice besides me. And um, with the deadline of like three days, it's, it's kind of nice because it forces you just to, you know, figure it out. And you know, like if I like if I got one of my dream jobs, like I was saying, uh, Jack White or Strokes, I'd probably like kill myself with trying to come up with the best thing ever. And like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's um, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm trying to read some of these. My favorite artist? Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. <laughs> um, there's so many good... I, mean, I don't know. 
all my peers, all the poster people, like I consider them like my favorite artists. Like, all right of now. them. That's no, uh, most of them. Yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> well, like when you get to know people, I'm like I got to meet a lot of my, these people at Flatstock and stuff like that. So it's like, um, I mean, you can admire people's work from afar, I'm like in books and whatever museums but like just like getting to see people like and knowing like they're in the same field i'm in and like uh, same problems same situations same stress and all that stuff it's it's really fun to talk with them about it and it's like a whole nother layer of um, art in that way just like how you handle it all because you mm -hmm. know it's most most of the time it's one person handling everything from the business side to the creation side to the printing side. So it's like to get all those uh, factors, you appreciate somebody's work a lot more than just like, Oh, that's a, that's a nice picture. You know, like I appreciate the, the values and the composition and all that stuff, which I do, but um, like <laughs> this, this one behind me, the Daniel danger is one of my favorite artists. He's, he's incredible scratch board work and stuff like that. Um, I could, yeah, I could name a hundred, but I'll, I'll spare you. Just, <laughs> um, <laughs> just you're at ninety nine, not a, not a whole hundred. <laughs> my favorite old timey artist is definitely like uh, Gustav Dore. He's a, he was like an engraver. He did all the Bible illustrations back. I mean, if you you know what I'm talking about, like those. Uh, he did like the entire book of the like the entire Bible. So these these are beautiful just black and white like engraving type deals they definitely um i have a few tattoos and it's like mud now but uh that's definitely one of my favorites and uh, when i first started drawing i was trying to copy them i was like oh maybe if i put a million lines in these things so if you look at my earlier work there's a million lines and everything it's like oh i can just i'll just copy what they're doing by putting a million lines in it and i had no idea what the hell i was doing and they all look like well, it looked terrible, but um, you kind of have to do something really bad for a while to realize it's not working. And um, mm. like, I, it was hard because like I associated that with my my ego, and it's like, oh, how are people are gonna know this is my work if they can't see all the millions of lines that I'm putting in there? It's like after I let that go, uh, it opened up um, a lot of new doors and possibilities, like. So now I'm like all the stuff I'm doing is kind of a little more painterly. Like I'm doing lots of because uh, I've been I've been painting in real life. Like I'm not I'm not on the computer. I've been painting on canvas and stuff like that. So that's really bleeding into my poster work, which is fun because um, I don't know. I'm just like I said. I'm always exploring and always trying something different because I get I get bored really really fast, especially mm -hmm. with, my, with my own stuff. So. Um, that's why it's it's good to travel and to meet people in all different mediums and all different walks of life. That way you get like a a nice palette and then you can come home and like sift through it and, you know, apply certain things here and there and just, yeah, I don't know. So I don't know where that, where I started with that rant, but. Uh, uh, someone asked what you, your favorite artist was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which, which I'm just like thinking, God, my brain at my age is still working so that's cool <laughs> so i'm loving this i'm loving scott's question so he's got because he's retyped pixies and he, okay. he's, he's typoed that as wrong as well it's so <laughs> not a c but he god love him um and i and he's he actually is a, a huge metallica fan and 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 has been so helpful to give him to live so i just want to while he's here say thank you um and be grateful but he's saying that your pixies washington and your foo in food fighters in pittsburgh also oh. very cool yeah food fighters is another one that i'd like to work with again they're just a great band i've always enjoyed their music and their message i think they're a really cool cool group they have mm. um i've never collaborated uh artistically with another artist um i've I've entertained the idea just like um, usually when it's like everyone when usually when the touring seasons of like on everybody's so busy with their own stuff it's hard to like connect um, I would like to but it's also like it's 
I don't want to ruin someone else's good idea. <laughs> so, so I just, I don't know. I, I haven't yet, uh, but I, maybe in the future. I don't know. Is there a, a current, I mean, and going back to, because, you know, getting to live is music. Is there a current gig artist that, you know, that you'd like to, you know, collaborate with? Um, yeah, I'd love to collaborate. Uh, my friend Miles, Miles Sang, you ever heard of him? I, I've he, heard of him, yeah. Yeah, he, he's, he does incredible work. He's super trippy, psychedelic. Um, feel free, by the way, just a little gentle plug. Feel free to, so next time you chat with him, to, to come on for a chat. We give him some oh, yeah. yeah, That'd yeah, be he's, cool. He's a good guy. Um, let's see. You have a Beethoven print. <laughs> that's a that's a really old one. That's the one with all the lines I was telling you about. <laughs> it's uh, Arctic Hansen. Um, uh, oh, Be Beethoven, yeah. Um, Beethoven, Beethoven. Um, sorry, because I'm, I'm trying to read the comments as well. E Love and Emac. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I met uh, Emac. I had an art show last um, October in mm -hmm. California, and uh, he was he was in the same show with me, and we got to hang out after the party, or after the opening, and it was it was really cool and hearing his stories. And man, he's like a legend, and mm. um, he's just a super down to earth, humble guy, and works really hard, and his work is definitely brilliant. I mean, I'm not going to put you on the spot by. Um asking your age is quite evident um, that you're younger than me but I'm just going slightly back in the conversation where you're saying going to flat stop meeting artists they were great I'm imagining also from what you said that they were able to kind of not necessarily mentor you but give you that sort of insight of how to give yourself a break you know when you're trying right. to trying to be yeah. per this like this poster has to be perfect this line was a millimeter away from where it should have been I, you know cause right. i hear this sort of stuff from artists and it's like ev not one has said yeah i got it down right on that ev everything right on that poster x not one person has said that <laughs> yet, yet yeah no for sure it's um just I guess, yeah, you, I guess you could say that they all mentored, we all mentor each other if we can, you know, just having a, a beer and talking about talking shop, you know, it's, yeah, it goes, it goes a long way, especially because most of us work alone, you know, just, yeah, we just go to our studio and work all day and print by ourselves. And you can talk to like your friend, other friends about art and like posters and all this stuff, but it, it's not that same, um, same level of, a uh, coherence because they're not doing the same thing we are just like anybody else's field you know like i can't i have other buddies a tattoo artist and uh it's it's hard to like i can give him my insight from art art fields but like just different mediums and different walks you know it's i don't know it's all important to to get the around i don't know what i'm saying sorry <laughs> no 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 it's okay. <laughs> You're coming across really clearly and making sense. Don't worry about it <laughs> at all. Do not wait. It's usually, it's usually me who's saying, "God, am I making sense?" Um, but so yes. I'm just thinking about like you saying about the Pooh Fighters and and that one, and would like to work with them again. It's like, how does? I mean, I guess there's a certain amount of your foot's in the door if you've worked with Band X, and then it's kind of. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, you never really know what you're going to get. Um, mm. Sometimes it's like, most, like, all the jobs I got when I first started, I just pretty much cold called everybody, mm -hmm. and like, and I started back in like MySpace era, <laughs> so right. I just like, uh, bands were a little more easy to like, just directly message, and um, so I did that a lot, and then, uh, yes, I'll, I'll just find whatever email I can and just like kind of shoot in the dark and hope, hope for the best. And sometimes it leads to projects. Like I remember, uh, I got like an email for the black keys or something like that. And I just shot in the dark. It's like, Hey, you don't know me. Yeah, I haven't been doing this long, but can I have a shot? And they're like, yeah, sure. Why not? That's so, cool. Yeah. Sometimes it works out really well like that. And sometimes it, uh, I don't know. You just, you just hope somebody gets a hold of you kind of, and you know, keep busy.
And I've heard similar from, I mean, and I won't name them by name, um, but someone who's been doing show posters for 15 years, I guess. And I mean, he, and he was saying he still reaches out, you know, yeah. saying, like, have you got any work kind of thing. Right. Not, some, you know. And it's, no. it's, it's weird, too, because you don't, um, every year seems to be at a different flow. Like sometimes like the winter is just dead or sometimes the summer is dead or like August to November is dead. And it's just like, I remember so my dad has always been, uh, it's Father's Day. Uh, my, my dad uh, has been a painter, like he paints houses and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's been self-employed like his entire life pretty much. And uh, I remember one, one winter I was like, haven't had an email in like three months. And I was like, this sucks. Uh, just like getting really down on myself and whatnot. And um, I remember calling him up and I was like, hey, does this ever get easier? Like the not knowing if you're going to have a job or work. And they're like, no, you just kind of deal with it. And, mm. forward, you know, so. I've just got to say, and it's kind of interesting because further back in the questions when we asked about like, is there anyone you'd like to um, collaborate with? You know? Yeah. And somebody suggested, um, you and Luke Martin. Oh yeah, and I see, yeah, and I see he's joined. He's yeah. joined. Yeah. Hey Luke, hope you're doing well, man. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like we, uh, he was in this art show um, he last year with Emek and me and uh, Joey Feldman actually out in L.A. and that was a lot of fun. We all got to hang out and have some beers and I never got to see Luke's work in person, uh, like the but he had uh, all of his clay boards, which is really neat to see and all the. You see the blue line drawings underneath and stuff like that. I love seeing like the, the stages where you see like the layers build up in person. That's it's awesome. Mm. So there you go. So I mean, you know, you heard yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that, Luke. You know, so, someone keep... was saying that they want a collaboration with you and Zeb. Yeah. Do you um, keep a copy of each one you do for yourself? Um, more or less, yeah. I I try to, but um, I was really good with it at first, and then on, after these years, like I just don't mm. I care, kind of, but I don't either. <laughs> like I, I have some of my really old stuff that I want to hang on to, but um, I more like I just did a print with those. It was called the Times, and it was those three kids marching. Yes, I still, yeah. I still, Sold every single one of those. I don't even have one for myself and all the test prints and stuff. So I don't know. I, like, I, like I said earlier, like I don't, I'd much rather be on somebody else's wall or home and then just sitting in a box. But, you know, I'm not doing anything with it. I've seen it a million times and I've looked at it and labored over it. And I'd much rather just kind of let it go. And um, yeah. This, from what you've just said, this kind of makes it feel almost like an unfair question. And you said you, you know, you you kept quite a few over the years, and you tend not to now. But right. if you, if you, you know, there was whatever a magical law came into place that you were only allowed to keep one piece of work you'd ever done. <laughs> <laughs> what would you? Well, am I being? Am I being? I don't know. Unfair? That's kind of like asking uh, your favorite band on the spot. I don't know. That's, yeah. that's a hard one. I don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I have a favorite. Mm. I, I don't like. I don't like most of them, honestly. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I can't say. Can't really put my finger on it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a totally fair enough answer, man. That's a yeah, tough totally one. Totally fair enough. I mean, it's kind of, you know, you kind of ask and, and often get sort of answers like, you know, you've done these many posters. Do you have a favorite? And it's like, oh, well, it's kind of like asking which is your favorite child type thing. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. And so I've kind of given up asking what's your favorite poster you've ever done. <laughs> yeah, I was. Um... Right before, right after I found out like flat stock was getting canceled, mm. um, I was pretty bummed about that. I uh, was like, well, I'm just gonna open up my my sketchbook folders and tear out like just get all of my original drawings and stuff like that. And I was holding on to those for a long time, and I was like, hell, I'm just gonna throw them up just randomly and see if there's any interest. And um, 
Yeah, it felt pretty good to kind of like go through and reflect and like look at each one of those. And then like, but at the same time, it felt good to let them go. And like, especially like original is different than just like a poster that I have multiple copies of. But yeah, I don't know. It, it was, it's good. Like I said, like I like to let things go and learn from them instead of hoarding. I mean, I hoard some stuff, some posters, some art and stuff like that. But for the most part, like, I just get tired of looking at my own stuff. So as much as I just get rid of it and use that money to buy other people's work, you know, and hang that up on the wall. No, that's fair enough. No, I mean, it's kind of, I hear stuff like that and then I kind of, you know, and obviously I'm not an artist, you know, doing show posters or, and also you don't only do show posters, which, you know, it must be a good thing in this, to use the cliche current climate with all the gigs closed, you know. Yeah. Because so many of I them, mean, I know so I know some artists who are purely gig artists, and you know that's it. They're done. You know until shows come back again. Um. Well, but um, I completely lost my train of thought because someone uh, asked the, asked a question. Oh. Um, uh, I would sell you the Oakland mat, but I'm not allowed to. Sorry. They they pretty strict with that. Uh, well, yeah, especially if they haven't, you know, not to be mean, but especially if they haven't spelled by right. <laughs> um, will I do any more Pearl Jam shows in the future? I hope so. I don't know. You know, it's, it's a weird, weird time out there right now. <laughs> it is. It's a very, it's a very weird time. And, I, you know, and it's kind of one of the things for me running Given to Live when it first happened, it was what the hell is the point of my existence oh luke's here as well luke priest i don't yeah, know, I, you know luke priest i think i know his name i don't know if i met him yeah no, have we luke, met luke i don't know sorry luke, luke's 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 definitely into his metal okay <laughs> yeah i mean we had him god i run you know days over here in the uk in the lockdown it's kind of we've been in lockdown for seems like forever but three months and it really is it's like what month it, sometimes it feels like what month is it what day is it what year is it you know yeah so, it's, it was um yeah when i after like after flat stock uh got canceled and all this other stuff got canceled like i had i had a big big job on my press and i was gonna i had the screens burned inks mixed everything was ready to go and i went home for the night and then i got an email that night i was like hey uh Hold off on printing that job because uh, we don't know what's happening. <laughs> so that was a big bummer. Anyway, like I just I packed up everything I had in my car and just like drove back to my hometown in Illinois and stay with family. I was gonna stay for like a week or two just to get away. I ended up staying for like two and a half months. And during that time, it was it was I felt like at, at first I was just like in this fever dream, like as everybody was, you know. I was like, what am I doing? Like, well, why am I wasting? T like, what, what? I don't know what am I doing with my time and stuff like that. And then, um, I don't know. After I got through that, uh, I started, like, painting, like, oil painting. And, and, like, that really kind of snapped me out of it and gave me a purpose, you know, even um, if it was just for my, my own, just whatever I wanted to do. I wasn't trying to sell them. I wasn't trying to make money. I was just trying to have something to do because, like, if I'm not making something, I kind of go crazy, you know, just, so, I don't know, I did that, and then, uh, it feels good to get back in the city, though, and to be back in the office, and the old familiar things, and whatnot. Mm. And I'm just reminded, from what, you know, lots of little things you've been saying, I'm just reminded about it, about your book. So you oh, yeah. So, I made a, I made a book, this is my third volume of it, it's, um, so since I'm a, I'm a screen printer myself, I print everything. I uh, usually print a couple of extras of every single poster because naturally they get damaged or ruined along the way or scuffed or whatever. And I definitely stole this idea idea from Jay Ryan. I bought one of his books, and it's like a mistake book pretty much where he just takes all of his extra posters laying around and cuts them up and gets them put together into a nice hardbound book. But, yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, this is this one was bound in Illinois by these professional bookbinders, and it's got like a 
foil stamped cover and spine and it's probably around like 60 pages or so each one has my original films in it that I used to burn screens and like um it's got a couple of photos and every every page is a poster and I printed the backs of them I don't know it's I'm really proud of it and I'm really excited to to have it and um so each each one of these volumes is like a couple of years worth of work you know and just like kind of I save everything like that's the stuff I hoard and like I save it and I know I'm going to use it for something later so uh, it's kind of nice to um it's kind of the same thing of like letting things go is like revisiting all this old stock and then like chopping it up and just like all right well let's put this in a book and you, you kind of look at everything differently once you do that mm. it's it's pretty i don't know so yeah i'm pretty excited about that i got pictures on the website and whatnot in my, my store um, if you want to look at those but someone's saying they'll they'll have to look for those the book themselves that's yeah got, that's got again yeah. Oh, yeah. Are they are they up on your side at the moment? Yeah, they're in my shop. Uh, yeah. I got like it's a edition of twenty eight books and I think there's like seven left. Hey Rachel. What, yeah. what, what you know, while we're here, what do they retail at? It's got, it's uh, got, they're, t- <laughs> they're two hundred bucks. Yeah. Because because uh they it took me probably like 70 hours of just like binding them all together and like sorting them and every book I arranged differently so that they're unique and uh, it cost me quite a bit to get made and stuff like that. So mm. yeah, it's, it's one of those things where I'm not like, I don't not It'd be nice to sell them all, but it's also like, I don't need, like I'm, I like to have them, you know? So it's it's like one of those things where like I'm not scared to put a higher price tag on because I don't want to devalue what it is. You know, it's like a lot no. of years of work. So, well, yeah, and also the way you described it, the way it was bound and everything, it's it's it's, it's not a paperback. You know, right? Yeah, you're not you're not picking up in the sort of new and new section and a certain <laughs> major, certain major co- uh, delivery company, shall we say, for three 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 cents and shipping. Right. Yeah. So. Um, what is like what what's your favorite show you've been to for the given to live like you've been to a lot of shows i'm sure but like can you tell share a story with uh one of the kids you want to show with or something it's, that was it's the most memorable one it's really hard i mean in a way and it's kind of and it, i was thinking about it when you were talking about um you know, there's always something that can be done better. I mean, the, I always remember the I always remember the first one we did because it was the first one we did, and and the last one because it's the most recent. Um, the first one we did was Spoo Fighters, and you know, we were. I mean, we're always pretty much hand to mouth anyway. Um, yeah. But I mean, at that stage, I couldn't afford a business card. We couldn't afford T-shirts. I mean, and I felt way out of my depth, thanks to an organization of uh, Food Rider fans. They sort of tweeted like there was no tomorrow. and We got a meet and greet. And I'm like, oh, what, what, what do you do? What do you do? You know, yeah. oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. But they were amazing to us had us watch side stage. And one wow. of the coolest, one of the coolest parts of it, and it's, when I started it, I said that we do it for the vulnerable and excluded. And and I, that was very deliberate so that we could be very inclusive. It wasn't just going to be for a, a kid in a wheelchair or a terminal illness. You know, we've also taken... I'll get to, my, I'll get to the one that I'm proudest of um, in a minute. Um, and... It, it was a really strange moment because we're on this, you know, in the little section that's slightly sort of cordoned off on the side stage, and I'm looking out at a, um, I don't know, 20,000 people or whatever. It was um, yeah. part, of, part of the Invictus Games over here. And there's this old lady just on the other side of the barrier, you know, and I'm looking at her and I'm thinking, this is kind of weird, you know, just kind of, it just, you know, in my brain, it's like you're in a rock show. Yeah, you know, you're definitely, you know, older than most. 
And, it, and the thing is, she was in this old plastic chair that kind of, like, you know, would have been outdated when I was at school almost, you know. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is really weird, you know. And, and, I, and after a little while, I wait, waiting for the band to come on, she, she just suddenly turns around to this young woman, you know, or young girl, who was probably 15 at the time, Kaylee, who we took to the show. And she went, are you Kaylee? And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, yes, I guess she is. And oh, I'm Dave Grohl's mum. And I'm like, oh, okay, wow. then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I kind of had a moment looking out because I know so many people were there who had been part of, you know, tweeting and getting this to end up being a, um, a meet and greet. I knew a lot of them were there watching. And I, you know, I certainly haven't lived an angelic life. I mean, you know, there was a lot of drugs and alcohol in my youth and rehab and homelessness and what have you. And I had this kind of moment of looking at it. Like I've eaten books, you know, the, excuse the language, the shitty stuff I've done, I've done something that's kind sure. of not necessarily fully even it, you know. Um, the last one we did was a band called Sabaton, who I'd never, I mean, there's a lot of them I've never heard of, you know. Yeah. I get the application, it's always... You know, if you were to make an uh, application for a brother, for your dad, because he's going through this, or a friend who's going through that, it's like they see what they want to see. It's not like, well, you're in X and they're not playing there. Too bad, we'll find you something similar. We will always take them to... Oh, so the, the person that's applying puts a... Like, they request what band they want to see? Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we kind of have a sort of you can't apply for yourself rule. You right. Know? I mean, just, you know, I mean, I've had, yeah, it just feels right to have it that way, you know, yeah. because it's meant to be a little bit of a surprise. But then sort of mum, dad, cousin, care worker, whoever it is will say it's for whoever and their favorite band is X, you know. Right. For instance, we got an application for a youngster with autism and he wanted to see Queen. And I love talking to his mum because she was, you know, every day in a very, you know, he's, he's fairly, you know, high functioning or autistic, but also at the same time in that very autistic way, it was every single day was, mum, I need to see them this time because they're going to die soon. Mum, but I'm going to have to stay every day, you know. Yeah. Um, but their tour here only included the Isle of Wight Festival, which meant leaving, you know, getting a ferry across, it was never going to be easy. So I'm like, what are we going to do? And I looked at their tour dates and I knew that it's not difficult and it'd be kind of an adventure and a trip because it's always about trying to give somebody something really special. It's not just, there's the tickets, get get there yourself. So right. we, we took him to to Brussels to see them, you know, wow. which was, yeah, which is kind of easy. We've got the Channel Tunnel, and one train stop, we changed in wherever and ended up in brussels and it was kind of easy and spent a couple of nights he got to go with his dad and did he get to meet queen or no we didn't i mean and we i mean you know i often think why on earth did i start doing this i mean i know why for a million and one different reasons um yeah. but, but it's you know i always kind of joke you know jimmy page isn't my uncle you know if he was every single door would be open you know, right. so, so many times I'm like any other fan. It's like somebody's applied to see Band X and I'll have to just go online and just try and get enough tickets, you know. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's got to be, it's got to be tough to deal with because I'm sure you get so many passionate emails and applications and life stories and like just so touching that you want to help as much as you can, but then like certain things don't line up and then you can't make it happen for this person. And then they got a limited amount of time where they can go see it. And that's gotta be hard to deal with. I'm sure it's emotional toll. Yeah. That's actually, that's really, really well put because I kind of oftentimes feel, how can I put it? That it's, you know, I'm hold someone's asked and they want to go and see Band X, you know, and and it feels like it's kind of like I'm holding the weight of this person's dream. At this point, they don't necessarily know that they've been applied for, you know, yeah. but 
you know, it's like, you know, mum, dad, cousin, carer, you know, sister, brother, whoever it is, daughter, you know, wants this to happen because of X reason. And I'm like, I've got to make this happen. And I, and I, I'm not, you know, I don't, I have no interest unless it happened totally organically in being mates with a superstar, you know. Right. But I do know that that would really help me open an awful lot of doors. <laughs> if someone understood and respected what we did and said, oh, you know, Eddie Better, for instance, right. you know, has said, yes. yeah. It seems like he really, he's really supportive. And yeah. It's pretty cool that you got him on your side. Yeah. I'm, sure you, I'm sure that helps a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still tough to get help from Pearl Jam themselves, but that's just, you know, they're very... Um, uh, what's the word? Um, I mean, they're very protective, and I've seen what happens as a fan, you know, and and I it, it kind of makes sense. I mean, I I wouldn't necessarily want to be in Ed, Eddie Vedder's shoes, and I'm I'm very privileged to know um, somebody whose husband works very closely with them. You know, yeah. and, and I've met him, and it's you hear some of the stories, and it's obviously not going to be just Eddie Vedder. It's kind of scary, you know, the level of fandom. Yeah, yeah. But it, you know, but it would be <clears throat> great to have somebody who could, you know, open the doors, and that kind of is a very neat segue into kind of favorite from the, from the proudest, not and it help that it was Eddie Vedder because you know I like it but I mean I, I mean I've seen Slipknot Slipknot are our most requested band you know and I would never you know they but that level of heavy I was into yeah. metal, metal and rock when I was a kid they're just like that level of heavy but there's a few of their songs I like now you know yeah but <clears throat> we got a request from a mum to take her daughter to see a guy called Andy Black who's with Black Male Brides okay and um and that was because she had witnessed and been through, you know, the mum's domestic abuse. And it was, I mean, domestic abuse is never good, but this was really, really awful, you know. Yeah. And what, you know, chatting with the mum, I was, she didn't know I was asking questions deliberately to kind of, because it's not just for the daughter who, in black and white, she actually saved her mum's life one time, you know. Yeah, but it's it was the mum who was actually suffering that domestic abuse every single day. So I was asking little questions all the way through our conversations about yeah, I'm organising this for Andy, you know, for her daughter, for Andy Black, and I'm kind of she doesn't realise I'm kind of just getting gathering bits of information. And a year prior, she was meant to have seen Pearl Jam in Amsterdam and couldn't go because the court, she had to be in court about the abuser. Yeah. And almost exactly to the day Eddie was playing in Amsterdam. And I, so I went to, we always go and visit. It's kind of fun as a surprise. So we went and had lunch and, the, and I, it was, we, we kind of, I'm not, I don't enjoy the lying bit, but we kind of faked out the daughter that I was from some charity who was interested in what it's like being the daughter of someone in domestic abuse or whatever, and, and went to tell her about, you know, you're going to see Andy Black and her mum, and, you know, when I told her that, her mum kind of fell apart and said, I need to go and get a drink, you know. And while, <laughs> while she was there, and I'm very clear and passionate that it's important to me that it's that person's show. It's not for, you know, unless, you know, it's, we've, I think we've once or twice taken two people together who knew each other and they really wanted to go together. Yeah. Otherwise, it's their show. They always have a plus one. It's, it's tough sometimes to get plus two, especially in the, over here in, you know, we call them the disabled, you know, disabled sections. They, won't, they don't really want more than one a plus one unless it's a really, you know, you yeah. can't, that person can't be left alone. And something in my heart said that it's okay to say to the daughter, can we off, we take your, you know, we want to take your mum, you know, I don't want to take today away from you, you know, as well as your show. But 
is it okay to tell your mum? And she said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, we want to take her to see Eddie Vedder in Amsterdam and this, that, and the other. And um, when mum comes back from getting a drink or going to the loo or whatever it was, it was, I said, oh, I've got something to tell you. And what was so cool was her 14, probably 15, 16 year old at that time daughter, maybe, no, nah, probably 17 by that time daughter. And she just took over straight away like that. She went, oh, and Jim Fly, they're going to take you to see Eddie Vedder in Amsterdam, you know, because of what you've been through. And, and, yeah. I was, and, and she fell apart. That was in itself really cool. But what was amazing was they both wanted to tell the story. And when we tell the story, I don't want to kind of just do a, hey, look what we did. You know, we got a kid here who, and we've taken them. If, with their permission, we tell the truth. And they said, no, we want the truth told about domestic violence and what happened. And I'm like, you do realize once it's up, I can take you down 30 seconds later, but it's, if someone screenshotted it, it's there forever. Right. And they really wanted to tell the story. And, and a couple of hours before the, the show, and this is, I think, the proudest part of Giving to Life, there were five women and myself you know, and she got loads of support, you know, on our on our Facebook page, but also in private messages. And there were five women talking about either having left domestic, domestically abusive relationships, still being in it, or being children of, you know, parents where there was domestic abuse. And I'm sort of there really struggling not to fall apart. Yeah. With, with pride, but also with watching these women get together and say this happened to me as well this is happened this is what you know so yeah wow yeah it's got that's got to be a heavy heavy moment you, know, you deal with and yeah. it's, it's so cool that you get to be there and like help facilitate yeah. those kind of things otherwise you know that, that woman might have never got to tell her story or feel like she could let it go you know mm. Yeah, and I know it made a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of people got in touch. We've got 90 seconds. And oh, wow. I'm <laughs> oh, that <not> quick. <laughs> um, so I've, I've, you know, people have been listening. And I'm going to record this, which takes forever. So um, it'll probably go up live and I'll send it to you tomorrow. Okay. Um, people have heard a little bit more about given to life but you know in this last minute is there anything else you want to just throw into the mix you know um, something I'd, coming something coming up soon you're dropping something that's you know you I'm, want to I'm probably out for. dropping a, a new poster that for a cancelled show um, maybe this this week uh, so if you sign up a newsletter you can be notified about that um, Everybody yes. sign up for Zeb's newsletters. <laughs> sign up now. now. They're, very, they're very rare, about once every month. So, but, um, Also, just thanks for supporting my art and um, letting me buy food and groceries and rent. And I like, I'm, Scott I'm super fortunate ordered, and thankful. Scott's just ordered your higher learning. I don't know what that means. Not oh, a that, food fighter, but still very cool. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it, man. And Scott is a really, he is, he's, like I mentioned him earlier, he's been great to give him to live and he's a huge, mad Metallica fan. Yeah. <laughs> We've got four seconds, so I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks so much. Right. Bye, everybody. Thanks.